Well, okay, kitties, here we are with part two of my first skin on frame kayak construction adventure. I think um, I left you somewhere hanging with parts hanging off and unglued and unscrewed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this uh, second part, we're going to do the finished work and uh, a little bit of a float test because uh, actually that's the whole point of this is to make the thing float. So I believe I left you someplace around here. I didn't ha quite have the bow pieces done. Uh, you can see the glue here. I use it a Gorilla Glue. When it gets wet, it kind of goes, pff, foams up. It's all over the place. As I said before, uh, I made absolutely no attempt to uh, clean this up. It takes as long to do the finish as it does uh, just about anything else. Uh, so I didn't make any effort at making a nice clean finish. I may regret that later on, but that's the way it goes. First your money, then your clothes. So that's the um, bow. And this was tricky to do, you know, to get this angle right and get it tapered so it goes down there. It took me quite a while of messing around with that. And I had to fix a lot of things. You can see a fix down here where I had to put another piece in. So it's partly why I use such cheap material because uh, I knew I was going to mess it all up. And uh, I have. So I had to do lots and lots of fixes. This is the uh, stern. Once again, you can see the Gorilla Glue kind of foamed out over here. D didn't make any attempt to clean that up either. So I got uh, the frame done pretty much. And I decided I was going to put a floor in um, so that I could sit down without punching through the plastic that I'm going to eventually use to cover this thing. Um, and these little strips right here were left over from cutting the uh, gunnels, right? So I had these little strips left over and I said, well, I'll just use those things. So I started putting them down with some funny looking flathead screws that I had and discovered I didn't have enough of those screws. Um, so I ended up going down and buying a new type. Um, these are ceramic coated and they use a kind of a star head on them too so I pulled out all the old screws and put in the new ones. Uh, I mentioned before in the previous um, video part number one that if you don't have a, a Japanese saw or a pole saw you really ought to get one and here's a good example of why um, you can do some really very clean uh, cuts with this thing. It's got two sides, a, rough, a, a, um, a rougher a cut and a finer cut over here. So I just put these things in, uh, drilled the holes in here with a little extra length because that way you don't have to worry about splitting the thing as you're dr drilling the holes. Uh, and then you can come back in with this back saw and pull up to cut these things off. You can see I cut them off over here. So a little plug for uh, the pull saws. I really like them much better than the uh, push saws. Okay, so continuing on, um, I uh, had to make the, um, I just lost the name of it, uh, this this piece that goes around here, it's n not the cowling, the, oh man, it's what happens when you get old, the word comes in your head and immediately goes out, uh, I'll get it in a minute, um, but I had to make this thing up out of scrap, I had just a few pieces of scrap left over from my half sheet of plywood, so I made this up by uh, taking a piece of the uh, stuff I use for the for the chines, combing. That's what this is called. I don't know why they call it combing. It doesn't do anything for your hair. Um, so I made it up out of uh, several pieces. You can see here where I you know, screwed this piece onto that piece. And the same thing on the back here. I made the back part. This is the under part of the combing. And then uh, I have to fill in over here with some more little scrap pieces of uh, plywood. So I was making the combing. And turns out I didn't do this correctly, uh, I'll tell you why in a little bit. So uh, I've got it put together here, the combing up here, and I, I use kind of a squarish pattern, because that's the scrap I had left, um, to, to um, put, out, put down the first part of it. But I also discovered that um, you really need for this thing a brace, an extra bracing here, because uh, you only have one place to attach the front of the combing, the underlay uh, part of the combing. So I put in a, a extra bracket on each side and also a little lift on each side over here because this is pretty flimsy because of the stuff I'm using. So this is a close up of the front bracket right there so the whole thing rests on that in the front and um, over here you can see the side braces a little close up of the side brace. This took a little bit of dinking around too because this is a compound angle down here and uh, same thing up here. It's not just 
it's not a 90 degree so I had to mess with this a little bit I had to do that quite a, quite often in here kind of mess around cut a piece mess with it cut a piece mess with it it's partly what takes so long when you're doing these prototypes is because you're not really sure exactly what you should be doing and you just have to experiment end up making lots of little pieces of firewood because it didn't fit oh no I have to cut another one so here then uh, is a, a picture of the uh, fill-in piece that I put on the under part of the combing because there's another piece that goes on top of this when you finally get it all skinned. So here's my little fill-in piece right here and little fill-in piece right here. So it gives you a flat surface to put the uh, finished uh, combing piece on the top when you're all done. Uh, here's a photo of the whole thing uh, ready to, uh, to be actually um, waterproofed um, and a lot of the books will tell you to fiberglass this stuff or use epoxy and so on which is probably a good idea but um, hey I'm working on the cheap here so um, there's another photo of it so you can see it uh, I'm working on the cheap so I just went down and got a quart of um, spar varnish this stuff really stinks too you need to do this outside um, when I get ready to do my really finished one, I will not do it this way because you cannot reach into all the little crevices once you've got all this assembled right here. Um, you, you really need to finish all of the parts and then assemble the thing rather than the other way around. So, so I used uh, exactly one quart of this um, marine spar varnish. And like I said, you need to do this outside because it stinks. Um, and I managed to get... Uh, most of it covered as well as I possibly could. I'm sure there are places in here where it, uh, you know there's still some raw wood, but I didn't see any, so that gave me a, enough to uh, start the next uh, piece, which was the final top layer of the combing. So once again, I had the scrap pieces. I cut out, cut these out out of the uh, plywood, and but then I had a, a bit of a problem because I had to piece all of it together. So I needed to do a kind of a butt joint here so that. Um, I had a continuous smooth surface for your arms to lay on. So I used uh, my biscuit cutter. Once again, I'm very fortunate. I have lots of tools. Um, biscuit cutters are really nifty machines. Um, you just, it's got a little blade in here and you just go bing and push it in like that. And it makes a groove like that if you get it set up correctly, of course. And then you just stick a little biscuit in there on each side. Clamp the whole thing together with some magic glue. Um, and then just cut these off Boop, over here the half of the biscuit that sticks out and uh, that gives you a nice uh, smooth flat surface so then I'm ready to go with my uh, temporary uh, sheathing or skin and what I did was I went down to the local hardware store and I got some of this a uh, roll of this uh, kind of translucent um, plastic this is the heaviest I could find it's six mil um, the stuff I really want to use is 20 mil, but um, I'm sure it's going to be expensive and I didn't want to take a chance because I didn't, never did this before, so I needed to be able to um, mess up yeah, without it costing me $100,000 billion. So I uh, unwrapped this stuff and laid it out over the upside down um, framework right there. Notice there's all of this over here is more, more stuff, so I got enough actually I could do this a second time if I messed it up. Uh, so then you just cut it off and uh, I might note here that um, this side I actually cut too short <laughs> and a little piece of it needed to go over over here on the top and it didn't quite make it so you really need to leave a lot hanging off here in order to start so I used a couple clips just to hold it kind of the center line I used a little seam of the plastic uh, or a little fold mark of the plastic so I could get it run down there straight and then just used a couple clips to hold it together and then went around and clipped it a few places onto the gunnels right here so I could flip this thing over. So I flipped it over and then just took the ends of the plastic and wrapped it over the top and then used an electric stapler. <clears throat> you could use a hand stapler if you wanted. And I just stapled it along here, pulling it tight each time. Uh, I, I actually stapled this first layer first a few staples and then took this side and laid it over and stapled it all again and then went back through and cut this off right. and then over that cutoff piece I took uh, the magic um, duct tape you know you really only need two things in this world to actually fix anything you, you need a can of oil 
because if, if something's supposed to move and it doesn't you need the oil and if something does move and you don't want it to you use some duct tape to hold it in place probably didn't know that huh um, so I duct taped over all the seams and then I made a little um, emblem this is a uh, team geezers athletic society this is uh, one of my groups I belong to team gas so I uh, covered the whole thing up uh, the tricky part is doing the, the bow and the stern of course you gotta mess around and fold it up and all kinds of stuff so in order to cover over the folds that I did here so I didn't have any kind of a break in this in the seam I just took uh, some old black plastic uh, trash bags and kinda cut a piece here and a cut a piece over here and then just held it in place with uh, duct tape so it kinda looks like you know racing stripes or something like that um, and uh, also because this is so flimsy it's only six mil plastic I took uh, the, du uh, the uh, duct tape and I went down the keel like the front part of this I did four layers of duct tape here and then on each one of the lower gunnels I ran a string of duct tape so that um, I would have at least some abrasion resistance okay so here we go with the float test let's see if I can uh, get this thing to kind of go that way mm -hmm. uh, come on come on come on okay here we go boink check it out it's actually floating I have my high-speed uh, helmet on too with uh, Snoopy goggles because I wasn't sure how fast I would actually be able to go I also made a little seat back for it adjustable seat back because I discovered that uh, I needed something to hold my old back up All right. So there you go, 10-4, Roger Rubber Ducky, it floats. Now I'm going to tear the skin off and redo the combing and get this thing ready to be uh, actually kind of halfway decent looking. Although I'm pretty sure I'm going to keep my little uh, Team Gas emblem someplace on here. All right. So, kind of cool. It's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to doing the real good one and also cleaning this one up. Well... Perhaps I'll see you out on the water someplace. 10-4 Roger Rubber Ducky over and out.